Trauma. How many of us have trauma? And how many of us objectify ourselves to that trauma to get over it? And what does trauma have to do with Harry Potter? All this coming up after the intro. Welcome to another episode of Bricks and Toys. That's Toys with a Z. My name is Brandon, and I am happy you all are here. Just so you guys know, this video breaks my rule of a few days in advance we film. This video is going to be filmed over the next month because this build is a mother in size and... I'm going to take my dear sweet time. Not to mention, I have a lot of undealt trauma with this franchise. Now, before I put this build up and unveil it, which I'm super excited to do because it is a build nonetheless, a little bit about me. Now, if you go back and you watch the video of the Retired Sets Showcase, I show you a picture of me when I was about 11 years old in 2002 on Pier 49 in San Francisco with Alcatraz behind me. If you have not seen that video, go back, watch it, and at least check out that part. And the reason that that part is important is for you to get a sense of what Brooks and Toys once was like as a child. I was a tall, scrawny kid. And because of that, I was subject to bullying. And bullying is a very important subject to my life. You know, I have kids now and I wanna make sure they're not bullied. I've gone as far as in to allowing myself, you know, to move so they have a better school. Bullying is not acceptable, but I was bullied when I was a kid for reading Harry Potter books. Harry Potter is a franchise that I loved. I love, love, loved, loved it. I read the first four books, which to my notes here came out between 1997 and the year 2000. Unfortunately, I come from a poverty background. If you weren't into stuff that was real, how dare you? And as a result, my life was almost taken from me for reading Harry Potter books. And because I was almost murdered as a child by other children of my same age group, I turned my back on Harry Potter. I never finished the three books. I never watched any movie above the second or the third movie. And I was robbed of that franchise so traumatized that I never got into another franchise again until I was 23 years old with Star Wars and I had this body. And this body is a lot of weight and I now have the attitude of when I get into anything with fantasy, come at me, bro, come at me. I freaking dare you. And that's because of what happened to me when I was a scrawny child in love with Harry Potter. I loved everything about it and it was stolen from me and put it in, in the face of fear. And now I'm gonna deal with that fear by doing this build for you guys today. And uh, let me show you what this build is. This is the Hogwarts Express. Let me just see, the collector's edition. My mom, she saw this train at the Lego store and she loved it. And I did not want to tell her or encourage her or do anything to make her get this build. I was like, yeah, it's cool, whatever. You know, I don't do Harry Potter. But she wouldn't let it go. And then I maybe told her, I said, we could sell the, the minifigs and the plaques off of it and maybe go to Bricklink and get new plaques with, with like railroad, you know, printing on the plates. And, and just get rid of all the Harry Potter stuff. Maybe make $100 back on the minifigs and the, and the printed Harry Potter stuff and just delete it. But she went ahead and she bought the set. 
Now I have to confront this demon that I have had for 22 to 23 years of my life. And it's to the point that when I saw this, I'm like, this is amazing. I look at the mini figs, a few of these that I remember from reading the first four books, and I'm like, wow, these are cool. And then the moment I say that these are cool, I slap myself literally in the head and I say, how dare you? Do you want to die? That's how long this has stuck with me. I literally took a rusty nail going down a flight of stairs in the back of my skull because I believed in this franchise when I was a kid. But we are positive. We are going to heal and we're going to heal by doing this build together. Now, before I cut open the box, I'm going to tell you guys straight up, we are not going to do a time lapse of this build. We are going to build it in my free time over the period of a month, like I already stated, and go about it that way. So without further ado, let's cut open this box and check it out. I'm so excited. This is the first over 2,500 piece set we've ever had on the channel. Well, at the time of recording this, I do have some other things behind the curtain that may hit about 3,000. So I was gonna do my, my famous dump that I've always talked about, but I am greeted by a box. So let's pull out this box. Come on, buddy. Do I have to do some Harry Potter magic like Hocus Pocus box come out -us? Okay. Come on. So, so that's a box right there. And then in there, we do have some bags. So let's do the dump on these bags, guys. So my workspace clearly is not qualified for something of this size. So we're up to bag 33. So we're up to a bag 39 on this. Wow. Let's see if we can find any bags any bigger. Just go through them really quick. I'm not gonna count all these out. There is way too many. I'm getting excited. I've never done anything this big before. I'm putting them back in the box because I don't wanna keep them falling off my desk. So what was the number, 39 guys? 39 is the number to beat. So this is gonna be like the R2D2 I'm, I'm guessing, where a portion of the bags are gonna be inside this box. So let's make room for this box. 45 guys, 45 bags so far. Awesome. We're breaking a whole new record of what, 14 or 15 I've done? I think 14. Let's see what's in the box. Yeah, there is more bags, guys. Let's dump it. So what, what, what was our number, 45? Let's see if there's the 46 in all of this. A bag of unmarked with the train wheels, really cool. So the, these all look like they're the um, earlier numbers. And another bag of unmarked, I've never had two unmarked bags in a set. So this looks like to be a 45 page, I mean, bag build. And one random straw, two random straws. Now let's check out our book or books. What do you guys think it's gonna be that don't know? Book or books? Well, wow. I've done two books, but here we got one, two, three, four. Four books. Do you guys really think I should give Harry Potter a chance again? Take this energy and go watch the movie and maybe get book five and pick it up again? Because I'm really getting excited over here on this. So book one looks to be the leading coach or the uh, lead train. And before I even read, let me guess. It's platform nine and three quarters. If that's correct, then I remember through all of the trauma, 22 to 23 years later. What does it say here? I know it says it somewhere. Yep, nine and three quarters, guys. See, I still do know 
about the Harry Potter franchise. I told you, I loved it. Before my uncle passed away of cancer, when I would visit my family in Northern California, because we lived in Reno at that time, I would show up to my grandparents' house and my uncle would show up sick and he would be at the door like this, or better accuracy, then he'd be like, I got you something. And I was so happy, and I remember what book that was. That was The Prisoner of Azkaban. I was so thankful for that. So the first book is going to be 281 steps and 150 pieces. And it's going to go through bag, see here. It's going to take us up to bag seven. So the book two is going to be 94 steps and 94 pages. So a step a page. And that's going to go eight through 15. Oh, eight through 19, I'm sorry. Book two. Better hurry up, my camera's getting hot. We're looking at about 315 steps and 230 pages. And bags 20 through 35. And final, we're looking at 174 steps and 126 pages on book four. Bags 36 through 45, like I guessed it. There will be no time lapse due to the severity of this build and the complexity. I just want to take my time with it and not record it and I want to enjoy it and maybe bond with the franchise again. So after this you will see me do the close-up review. Okay here is my tour and overview of the Hogwarts Express. So so far we have the main engine then we have the coal car we do have a conductor inside of the main engine car, which is pretty cool. There is a lot of cool detail just on this first part of the car alone. It does come with some printed and some unprinted pieces. Still really unique. On the car itself, you can turn this little knob and make the wheels go chugga chugga. Unfortunately, I think my cat chewed on that and derailed it for lack of a, for lack of, of a better term and it kind of even makes a sound effect which is cool just wish my cat didn't break that i have to fix it here is the coal car no special uh speed uh, features with it at all it's just a coal car the way that they did the um, yellow is really trick and really cool. That's um, Those are actual Lego pieces. Here is the Hogwarts Express ticket you get with the set. Coming around, you do have platform nine and three quarters. A lot of detail. There's a lot of stuff going on in this. And there are tile plates to... Um, arrange the minifigs however you desire. Really cool. I like the way that they did these um, this brickwork arches. Really, really awesome. Then there is a plaque talking about the train. Coming around, we got the back of the main compartment, the back of platform and nine three quarters, and it's still detailed on the back of the platform, even though the back of the coal car and the side of the engine. Now, there are Technic elements on these tracks to move this platform. This depends on how you want to display it. The platform does come loose with just a little bit of very light persuasion. You can pull that out. One cool fact I did want to note while it's all here together. They're holding little version tickets of that. Really cool. Now the train car back here is the awesomeness. Probably the majority of like 5,000 pieces. You can light up the cabin for that scene. This is more of a first uh, movie. This is more towards the second or the third movie. And these are towards the end movies. 
Now, I don't know all of the characters' um, names, except for, you know, Harry, Ron, and her Hermione, or Moiny. I can't say her name. I have a speech impediment. Then we got this dude. That looks like Draco. And we have the little snack lady. She's in there just chilling. These sides do come off just like that. You can pull them up and get in there. And then you get a way better look. And then the lights even do better when it's a little bit dark to see those scenes. Pretty cool. This scene is the one where they're having all the snacks. And she walks in and he has uh, Ron's pet rat. This is when the Dementor comes and sucks Harry's soul. And this dude comes and rescues him. And then there's these two. I think this is when she rescues him and he's exiting the train. That's in, what, the fifth or sixth movie? I watched them back to back last night. So they're all kind of blurred in there. Is there any other part of this that comes off easy? Yep. And then that part pops off. And if you don't do it right, you will send your minifigs flying. But it does allow you to see how these doors operate, which is pretty cool. And all the doors are fully functioning. Really, really cool. There's a lot more to talk about with this set. But instead of just keep going over and over and over, I would rather just go on to my final thoughts, guys. The Hogwarts Express Collector's Edition. Final thoughts. I really wish I did have a build time for you guys. Unfortunately, the build time kind of got broken up over so many days that I lost track. If I had to, to put a number on it, I would say maybe about 12-ish, maybe. The price is about $500 for this set. It is about 5,000 pieces. It is not a functional train, unfortunately. Um, it is a model train. So what you see is what you get and you can't motorize it. It's very basic. It's just like, you know, with the Lego Titanic. I'm gonna say the same thing I did when I did that video. And if you like Harry Potter and you love Lego, and you want to see certain aspects of Harry Potter come to life during Lego, these collector Harry Potter sets are awesome. I've got two more in the roster. I've, I have Diagon Alley, and I have the one with Hed, Hedwig and Harry's Supplies that I wish had a better name. I just picked it up today when I filmed this video. These collector sets are amazing. But unfortunately, this one, like I said, is around $500, and that may be a little hard for some people to swing. I know if I do not have the luxury of being a house caretaker for my mom who travels, I would be not spending $500 on a Lego set. That would be probably, uh, by now, one-third of rent for a four-person family. Do I think it's an awesome set? I do think it's awesome. A lot of people, they critiqued the set and they didn't like the set because the stickers and the price point and everything. But if you are a true fan of Harry Potter, then, and you have disposable income and you love Lego, do this. this it's awesome. I, I, I think I had the most amount of fun just generally building a Lego train. Take the Harry Potter out of it and just look at the train alone. To build a Lego train is pretty badass. And I really enjoyed that a lot. I found myself um, watching all Harry Potter movies while building this. I got through six Harry Potter, mo Harry Potter movies. I still got to finish the seventh. And I think the seventh has two parts. I think I got to go see. And my views on, on Harry Potter are a little bit different than when I started this video. When I started this video, it was about two weeks ago. Now it's two weeks later. And to be honest with you guys, you know, Harry's cool. I do like Harry Potter. I just don't think I can ever have the, have the relationship with the franchise like I did when I was younger uh, because of the attack. Now watching the movies, I do support the franchise. And my mom, she keeps buying sets from the franchise because she's in love 
with the theme of Harry Potter. She loves the, you know, she loves Hedwig, the owl. She loves the train. She loves Diagon Alley. She just, she likes the visual aspects, you know, from the franchise that are made into Lego. And I am more than happy to build those sets. Unfortunately, the sets that she is buying is not disposable income. This is her, this is what she did, and this is my video on it. With that, guys, I'm pretty much out of things to say. I love the build. It was awesome. It's got great quality. I like how you can move the platform. I like the detail of the car, how it separates into multiple generations of Harry Potter. And the platform even has the new generation of Harry Potter, which is, I guess, his son. I have to get into that with the new movies when I, when I get there. Now I have to build Diagon Alley because what we're going to do with this set is we're going to lift Diagon Alley up to where it's with the platform at that level. That way you can see it behind the train. We're going to be building the Diagon Alley on a raised platform. And I have to look up the uh, manuals, brick link the parts, and figure it all out. Then once we have that all figured out, we need to get a shelf that's big enough to fit it. Because this is almost as long as the, the Titanic. And put the whole thing up on a shelf. And, you know, let eyes see it for many years to come. So if you enjoyed this video and you are liking these build videos, even though that this didn't have a time lapse, it was just a, um, a box unboxing, review, then final thoughts. If you're liking the videos, like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate every, each and every one of you. You all have a really good one.